sure. Is that sure. part of the Bajo Jutsu style? Okay. What style would that be? Is that different style? No, it's just whatever. What you can do here, Richard. I don't want to hit the poke too hard and chip up the Saya. Yes, sir. But, but There's lots of things you can do. They're not real strong, so you couldn't block with it. The sword would cut right through it. Okay? Styles aren't careful, but if I'm fighting in a group or I'm fighting inside and I turn like this and my side catches somebody and I need to move, I'm stuck in that moment. Okay? So when we draw, okay, when I draw, you see the side comes down. It's like holding a knock. My thumb goes in the same spot every time, the knuckle of my thumb. So I know where the side is. Okay? I know where the side is. Some of these, I'm turning in the moment, boom, right there. And you'll notice that the saya sits down my leg so it stays out of the way in the moment. Japanese, younger Japanese, are going to start valuing this knowledge and this training because they're going to see us do it. And some of you might have seen Isao Machi on uh, Japanese TV, cutting some different stuff, cutting some sheet metal, etc. Yeah. Okay, well, he's a personal friend. And he was motivated to do that by watching me years and years ago when he was a much younger man. He's still young from my standpoint. Okay, seeing me cut. So, I, I hope it does. If it gets competitive and the Japanese want to be better, great. Because I want this knowledge to stay alive. Okay. But Japan is a very, very different place than the time of the samurai. In every way, shape, and form. The same DNA is there, but the people are very different people. Except for odd guys like me. So I have some old Japanese friends, well, prime of their life Japanese friends, I, I, I uh, share information and sets no uh, because we're interested in the same stuff. It doesn't matter round eye, doesn't matter different culture come from. We're, we're interested in the same things. So he doesn't have anybody else he can talk about this to speak of, and I have so few myself. So to get relationships like that. I've also been training in Florida, Texas on a different code for 12 years. You can never know too much if you always need someone else to help you make you better. Although that style is, is different, substantially different. Yes? Oh. How, how many years have you been cutting, James? Um, I started classical arts in about 1979. 
Um, and I probably didn't start cutting till the mid 80s. When I started, you didn't use a live blade right away. I've been doing martial arts since 1960, but, but older sword blade stuff since the late, late 70s. I had a question. Yes. Earlier when you were demonstrating the draw, uh, earlier when you were demonstrating the draw, yes. and you were standing next to the person, yes. going into the muscle ground, going under the skin. The way you drew and then you brought up the sword, was this advantage? It sort of looked like a, a cover. Yes. When, when you were holding yes. It up. So that, that, that one particular draw worked like this. As he's cutting down, and you have to be very careful with this. If you do this, you're going to lose this part of your arm, okay? And so what I need to do is I wait, okay, until the last moment, and then I bring the sword up underneath his vision. It pams his sword away, and that continuing motion, which would be quicker than that, cuts as his sword is moving past you. So you're just allowing the blade to pass. You're not knocking it away. So you, are you practicing? want to hit edge to edge. Now, it doesn't mean that if, if there's no other choice, you won't. But you're practicing. You'd like to parry off the mune or the shinogi. Okay? If at all possible. Okay? And you'd also not like to have any blocking. So we don't have any real blocks. Some of the beginning techniques like this will start as a block. Start as a block, right? So they learn. And you learn where to put the sword to stand the shock of this. Because the person cutting it, you can see there's a lot of energy behind here. Okay? And then in the beginning, the parry would be as the sword goes by. Okay? Slow motion. But what we really do is that. And that actually fools the eye, and the chances of me hitting my blade aren't even good. Old stuff is about deceiving the eye with your body motion. Okay, with your ability to perceive what's happening, not anticipate. Okay, not anticipate. Okay, so there's a step in the process of this. <laughs> and you do the same thing. Can I borrow you for a moment? <clears throat> if he goes to grab me, left hand. Okay. Now, could I lever enough? Grab for a moment. Yeah, but if he's got a second weapon, I'm probably going to be stabbed. Okay? So instead of this hand moving up at all, go ahead and stop this, okay? Instead of that hand, everything relaxes. It's gone, right? Everything relaxes. If he goes to grasp, eventually, if this doesn't move forward and he grabs, and all of this would move back, and grab, grab my wrist. Grab my wrist. Make sure you grab it, okay? Grab it. Again, grab it. Okay, grab it. Grab it. Okay, grab it. So he's missing. If I move this, the eye picks it up and tracks it. If I start from my back, it changes the shape of where he's grabbing. So he grabs, okay, that would have been a knife. Okay? <laughs> And afterwards, anybody that wants to feel that or try that, no problem, okay? Um, it's just completely different than mixed martial arts. It's completely different than blocking. And remember, you have lethal force. Nobody's talking about it. Sometimes I'm teaching military special operations. I'll bring a sword and a big piece of paper. Okay, who's going to block? Who wants to fight? Well, they don't have their firearms, so nobody stands up. You're not the biggest, strongest guy. Not their MMA guys. They don't stand up because they don't want to fight. Okay, now we're understanding combat. You are not tough. If you've ever seen people shot or blown up or cut, you know we're not tough. They knew that too. And close battle with edge weapons, exchanging force like you see in UFC, is not an option. It'd be like the two of us having firearms and standing here and start shooting at each other from five feet away. No one wants to fight like that. So everything became very subtle because of the need survive the combat.
that position of backing away is called middle guard for us. Some people pop into Jodengamai. Just depends on the style and how you're looking at it. We're looking at moving. So this keeps the center line. Okay, and if I finish here, and you'll watch if I do no toe, okay, all this relaxes, the point stays in the center. Okay, if I'm going to do Chibudi, it pops this way, it pulls like this. Normally I let the paper go and be full of blood. Back here. Now, as I relax back, my body moves out of the way and gives the sword space, and the sword stays in a straight line. So whether we're drawing or putting the sword back, we're always concentrating on giving the sword space. It'd be like slipping a punch when you're boxing, instead of standing there and trying to knock it away from you, right? He punches, you slip. So if I'm drawing, and this is a practice draw for training, the sword comes back, my side gets out of the way and the sword stays in the center. If I'm doing no toe, same thing. We don't touch the blade. A lot of people do. Most modern people do. It's not great for the sword, but it's more than that. You have to train yourself to an ever higher level of sensitivity and awareness. If you use training wheels when you put the sword away all the time, you're missing valuable training time. ranking samurai or what you've done was honorable like the Chushin Buddha, you got the opportunity to commit sub That was honorable death. Okay? If you were just a criminal, they might just use you for test cutting while you were still alive the first time or two. Practice on more than one body. Sometimes they even put extensions on the handles to test the blade. how you move. Okay. The question was, if you get longer blades, are they harder to use? Yes and no. Okay. Yes and no. It's how you train. If you're swinging like you no know, training, yes. If you're not, go to Chetsuzan Sensei, uh, who is much smaller than I am, uses a 31 inch blade for Ei uh, Jutsu, and he is the single best Japanese swordsman in that style that I have seen. Okay. Now, I haven't seen everybody, but that's just my experience. Depends on your style. Okay, now, it depends on your style. Hang on a second. Okay.
are the mats you're using just uh, inexpensive reed mats or are they something special? Um, they're all different. In Japan they use tatami because they use them on their floors and so when the Japanese are done with them they throw them away. So you go collect them, and soak them and use them. But if you have to import those here, well they're expensive. So these mats come from China trying to do the same thing. They're starting to get dry and gummy right now. You can see it stick on the blade a little bit. Okay. Yeah. See it sticking on the blade a little bit. But we use different materials for different reasons. If you're training just for Kenjutsu, it doesn't matter. You don't need to cut big stuff. Okay. And you don't need to cut stuff that's too hard that starts to take away from your technique. Yes. Um, when you're cutting bamboo, what would splinter in at the end of the bamboo? Well, that bag, if it's in the ground, it's probably meant you didn't cut real well. If it's in there, you can slump it sideways or not, primarily. It bothered me because in Japan, cutting freestanding bamboo, one of my cuts did that a little bit, and I wasn't happy. But since it came over, I said, oh, no, no, good cut. And put it all back together and showed the cut because some bamboo splits. Now, sometimes it's a bad cut. especially when you move Musashi. Um, it's not the way to bet. What am I doing here? Which one do I have? <laughs> it, it depends. Miyamoto Musashi supposedly uses the bokeh quite a bit. Okay, If you're a lot better than somebody, you can get away with a lot of things. It's not the way to bet. But certainly, wooden weapons of various kinds have a lot of advantages. And, and Medieval England, the quarter staff usually killed a whole lot more people than sword did. The quarter staff had a lot of advantages depending upon if you just had a sword, the quarter staff's got a lot of advantages. They're, they're much longer, they're very thick. Okay, you can reach people from a distance, they've got a lot of power. Now, if the guy's got a shield as well, that starts to change the ballgame now. So that depends. California. You know, it's like you'd like to redo your genetics a little bit. Like, can I get more melanin? How can you order that? It's called an inro. Yeah, it's about the box. Okay. So 
Um, he carries like a little, a little personal medical kit. Little different unguents and stuff in there, different herbs. Okay, so this was real common. An inro, a chesen, and it might be a metal one, right? It might even in the winter be one that doesn't open. Because Japan's like this and worse in the summertime. Hot and humid, right? Okay, so there's all testing jutsu, there's ways of viewing, using the fan, okay? Money was carried in the sleeves usually. So if a samurai said, would say like his sleeves were cold and then he was broke. Kind of like California. Questions, cuts you'd like to see? Yes. Uh, can you talk about and make some cuts starting from a kneeling position? Yeah, not on this stuff so much. This is actually a very nice hot one. I don't want to. Okay. <laughs> so, well. When was that most common that that would happen? Do we have a two? Dude. Have a two stick. Somewhere I had a thing that I liked one kill, one cut, right? It's like telling the sniper one shoot, but it doesn't always work like that. Headshots are best, but you don't do them at 900, 1,000 meters, right? You put center of mass, hoping to get a good piece. So that's why. Also, uh, we get down left knee first, right? Because that allows us to draw from here, right knee. Okay. Most of the draws that you see when people are starting from this position doing this were done with short swords. Okay. Now, modern styles will sit like this, but they're wearing their long sword where their short sword would be. Okay. So from here, sitting to get dry, they get gummy and stuff, it's just... Does it take more skill to cut a dry one than a wet one? Um, not necessarily, but they don't have any need. It's like the in-between is gummy. I'm a little too close to this. It's just hard to move on this ground without chewing up my... horse pants. They're like culottes. They were horse riding people. So that's why the split. They're like two separate lengths of pants just being, right? Before the gangster we had, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, kimono were worn all the time by most people. There are many different styles of hakama, okay? Many different styles. Sorry about that. You guys have seen me do that before, but 
it's hard out here for a couple reasons, but one of them is just it's hard to move on this without tearing this up. These things are not cheap. Another di different cut. Depends on what's happening. What was the question? <laughs> uh, body position. Yeah, is there slightly? It depends on what's happening. Okay. So it may look here like I'm forward biased, but I'm actually not. There's no pressure on my toes. You can see them moving. Okay. So the pose. Sometimes the kamai makes it look like you're leaning. The problem with leaning is now he can balance you. Okay. So whenever possible, even coming through. Okay. <coughs> There's still no pressure on my toes. You need to sit on the bones of your feet through your tibia bone. Okay? Lifting weights and stuff won't make you cut better. This is about using everything together. Getting strong can make it worse, right? Because as you get strong, you start using your strength. And it doesn't, they don't cut well like that. Okay? It doesn't cut well like that. So here, this is all about the body. If I tense my arms and start using my arm, shoulder, back, twist, it's not going to work like this anymore. showed that punch, okay, but I'm not hitting him hard, you can tell, but you can feel the energy. How, 